leg, neck, back, <laughs> whatever. Oh, I just, I have for a reason. You know, some people are weird. Do you hear me? Some people are weird. And most people put everything on God. That happened for a reason. Yeah, you shouldn't have jumped off that thing. You know, we, I mean, it was, it was your fault. You did it. And you know what? We put, oh, the Lord's trying to teach me. I wonder what He's trying to teach me. Huh? Don't be, what? No, oh, be obedient. Yes, amen. Psalm 18. This is one of my other favorite psalms right here. Psalm 18, verse 32 and 33. Amen. Glory. It is God that girds me with strength, makes my way perfect, makes my feet like hinds feet, and sets me on what? Huh? What does He set me on? What does it say? See, some of us were saying it right now, and I don't want to get up, but we're getting it wrong. Amen. Here's the thing. Everybody else got a, Kenneth Copeland got a high place. Brother Hagin had a high place. Oh, Pastor David, he got a high place. Everybody else has high. But it says right here, it is the Lord God that girds me with strength, makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon. Don't forget that two little word now. My high places. Everybody say this. Say, I have high places in God. See, it's not for everybody else. you got a high place. And here's where we miss. Oh, that's for everybody else. It couldn't be for me. Couldn't be for me. God doesn't. I hear all this. God wants to bless you. God wants to give you this, give you that, bless you, do this for you, do that for you. But that must be for somebody else because I'm just not worthy. <laughs> I've spoken about every church in this town before, and the biggest message out there is, "You're so, oh Father, we're so unworthy." <laughs> he thought you were worthy. He died for you. He raised from the dead for you. He gave you a spirit, gave you a son, gave you His word. He thinks you're worthy, don't you? Doesn't he? Get that mindset out of you, amen? You got high places. Everybody in this room has a high place in God. Throw the golf roots away. Amen? Because some of us, we go down the road singing, I got friends in low. I'm in a low place. I'm low. I'm... We get conf... Huh, maybe I'm supposed to be low. You know what? Here's what it says. You have friends in high places. You have a high place in God. Amen? You have a high place. And I'm talking about, it's not to ever now and then daydream about. It is to live at. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm always at the top. I'm never on bottom. Always and never. That means I'm living on top. Amen? That's where I live at. That's my place. You want to come to my place? Come on to the what? Come on top. Amen? Come on top. Don't, don't see it. Don't be so impressive. Don't try to impress people by talking like the world. I'm not on the bottom. I was at the bottom of the barrel, but you know, it barreled on top of me now. See, people say that, try to be cute. Try to make it, oh, we feel so sorry for you going such through your hard time. And how many people in the church like to talk about the world? Oh, how's it doing? I'm at the fifth barrel. Get it off of me. Get it off. Get it off. No, you need to just get it off and stop acting like you at the bottom of the barrel. Start acting like you at the top. Amen? And never at the what? Bottom. We, and, and see, what we can't do is start conforming to the world. Amen? We do it in the church all the time. We'll say things they say all the time. We'll get on one of them in just a second. But we say things because they say it. Oh, all right, whatever. I, no, I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. I am the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above, and I'm not ever going to be beneath. You can have your bad day if you want to. You can sit there and see God don't come up. We hear pastors say it all the time. He's not coming to your pity party. All we ought to do is start acting like. How many of y'all ever heard that mountaintop experience? We can have them every day, every morning, all the time. Glory. And sometimes you've got to make yourself have it, don't you? Because when you roll out of bed and you look in the mirror and you don't look like you look right now. <laughs> Some of y'all don't look nothing like you look right now and we wouldn't even recognize you. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm serious. Y'all know that? You know it. Amen? And we get all done. Oh, yeah, we get, now we're ready. But you know what? When you get out of bed, you've got to make yourself praise God, don't you? you got to say, glory. <sighs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. And then I mean, you might not start like that. It might start like that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And then by the time you make it to the car from the shower to, to doing all this stuff, by the time you get to the car, it ought to be loud by then. Amen? Yeah! 
Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Because I know this isn't a church thing now. We don't just do this at church. We do this all the time. Amen? Amen. I was praying in tongues yesterday by some guys painting with me. They thought I was... But we don't just do it in front of the church, people. Amen? Oh, but you got to be careful. Be careful, whatever. Don't be scared. Amen? Don't be scared. Amen. Where did I say go? Ephesians. It's over in the New Testament. Chapter 2, verse 6. I read five scriptures that kind of confirm what we're talking about in first service. I'm only going to read three of this one because I ran way out of time. But watch this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. It says right here, because you need to see, first thing you got to do, you got to really, really believe that your place is only at the top. Amen? Because if you don't, I mean, you will hear those old messages from that old denominational preacher will come back to you. For a reason. Go through it. God's teaching you something right now. So why not just say, stay in it, amen? Stay in it. Don't come out of it. If you're learning something big right there, keep learning. <laughs> Don't come out of the trouble. Stay in trouble. Amen? Love your troubles. Just love it. Praise your trouble. Lord, give me more trouble. Lord, please, make me sicker so I can learn. Make it hurt worse. Hurt me, Lord. Those thoughts that come, man, I'm telling you, I know you, if you heard all that stuff and you think that your hurting is teaching you something and that's what most people think, then, hey, hurt. Amen? Hurt. Keep hurting. Amen? But I want to be always at the what? Top and never at the bottom down there with them folks. Amen? I want to be at the top all the time. And the Bible says I can. And if I, how many of y'all believe the Bible is literal? I remember pastor said last week, you know, a lot of people don't take it literal. It is literal. You can always be at the top and never at the bottom. Amen? Ephesians 2, verse 6, here's what it says about us. And he has raised, has, has, he, he has, and he has, he has raised us up, what? Together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in what? Christ Jesus today. Right now, I'm not waiting on the sweet by and by. Later on sometime, I'm going to make it. I made it now. He raised, when He raised Jesus up, He raised me up, and He, he seated me right next to Him, and right with Him, it says. He seated me together with Him. He's the, we're the body of Christ. He's the head. He sat down. He sat down. We sat down. We are always at the what? Top. Always. 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 You just got to remind yourself of that. Amen? You're always at the top. Your trouble, it didn't come from God. Amen? You're always above that trouble. Amen? The devil's always under your what? feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of y'all know the church people that can do it in church now? Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know what? I want to know how to make it real, don't you? I want to know how to do this and live this and not just talk about it in church, sing about it, dance about it. I want to walk in it, don't you? I want to see. See, that's the spiritual side. We know the Scripture. We can stand on the Scripture. But just standing up saying this every day won't ever get you to the top. Amen. There's things. There's a, there's a spiritual side. There's a practical side to everything in this Bible. And we got to know both sides. Some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good, and they're weird. Some people are so... Earthly minded, they know no scripture and they're struggling all the time because they don't understand you got to do both. You got to have both the word and the spirit. Amen. You got to do both. You got to have both practical and the supernatural. How many of y'all know weird people? How many of y'all are? Now I'm playing. Let's turn over here. <laughs> I'm picking. None of y'all are weird. Amen. Nobody in here is weird. Where are we going? Matthew chapter 14. Practical side now. You got to know how to do the both sides, not just spiritual and dance about it, shout about it. We want to know. I want to know how to really make it where I'm going to always be at the top. Because that's a good promise, isn't it? Isn't that good that you're always coming out on top? I always come out on top. It don't matter what comes. Hey, I'm coming out on top. Amen. Matthew 14. Fourteen. Peter. We know the story right here. Let's read.